Christ is risen. Today's gospel comes as a continuation from last Easter Sunday's gospel. The gospel from last week was John chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. And today we continue at verse 19, verse 19 to 31. And we say Christ is risen, truly he is risen during these days. This is, this, this is our greeting to each other um, since we have celebrated the Holy Resurrection. And we will continue to use this greeting uh, for the next, next few weeks. Why do we do that? We do that in order to spread the good news that our Lord Jesus Christ has defeated sin and death. We are in a glorious time of the Holy 50. And unlike other denominations around the world who may celebrate this event of the resurrection for maybe one day out of the whole year, we have a great blessing to celebrate this feast for 50. Why do we celebrate it for 50? Because the church is showing us that this is our reality. The resurrection is our reality. The resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ changed the world. And it's an answer to the tragedy and the suffering of the innocent one who went to the cross for our sake, for my sake. And so this resurrection becomes our reality by virtue of our baptism. St. Paul says in Romans chapter 6, he says, Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, and in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in death, like, this, like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. So this is the gift that our Lord Jesus Christ has given to each one of us. And this gift is continually brought to our minds, especially during the Holy 50 Days and each and every Sunday. This is not a celebration of a cool idea. This is not like a famous story. This is not like Harry Potter. Like It's not a, a, a good story that we've heard. No, we're not. These kind of other stories that we hear around us, they're not going to have festivals and great celebrations in, in the name of Harry Potter. Our celebration within the church is a different nature. For us, it's a celebration of a life-changing reality. The resurrection of Christ, which we celebrate, is a celebration of truth over falsehood. It's a celebration of life over death. It's a celebration of light over darkness. In our readings today, there are many things that deserve our attention. It's very, very difficult to pinpoint where you want to spend time in your sermon. But... I wanted to spend time a little bit in the first verse, in verse 19, again from John chapter 20. We read, Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled. For fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them, Peace be with you. Why were the disciples afraid? One of the most important aspects this first day of the week, we're told that the disciples were hiding. They were hiding in a secure room behind closed doors. Why was it that they hid? The, the reason is not hidden from us, for fear of the Jews. Now, if we were to say these kind of things, we might be labeled as anti-Semite, but that's not what this is. But this is an incredible statement made by one of the disciples who was there at that time, and he also was a Jew. So why did the disciples have fear of the Jews? Because they had just seen what had happened to their beloved leader, our Lord Jesus Christ. It was such a vicious, illegal, unjust attack. And if that could happen to an amazing prophet like Christ, then, then by no stretch of the imagination would they think that the Jewish authorities could do the same to the followers of Christ. So... The disciples didn't have the idea, they didn't fully comprehend what had truly happened because they were still living in the old world, hiding in that upper room, 
they were still hiding in the old world. For the disciples, death was still death in that moment. Fear was still fear. Despair was still despair. When someone asks about the resurrection, I would gently point them to this passage. The disciples, these, these grown men, they were in fear. How does it happen that such frightened men, such cowards, would become brave as lions? How do such timid people become so bold? And I think it takes a small amount of logic to fill in the blanks. Let's see what happens. Our Lord Jesus Christ promised the disciples that he would not leave them orphaned. And he kept his word. The appearance of the master changes everything. The disciples, their eyes were opened to a completely new world. And they can leave the old world behind. In this new world, death is a minor point. Fear vanishes. Hope flourishes. And after seeing the crucifixion and death of their Lord, they now witness the resurrection. The one who had laid down his life for his friends took it up again. We have to understand that this is the reality by now which we live. The disciples understood this through physical contact of our Lord Jesus Christ. They became bold and they traveled throughout the world preaching the good news and baptizing in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. They changed the world because Christ had changed them. What about us? We don't see the physical body of our Lord Jesus Christ, but the Lord said to St. Thomas that those who believed without seeing would be blessed. What did he say in verse 29? Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. I think all of us believe to some extent. We have different degrees of, of belief. Some of us barely believe. Some of us believe in theory. Some of us have an intellectual belief. But our actions do not demonstrate the belief in our Lord Jesus Christ. Our Lord wants a heartfelt conviction. The kind of conviction that changes the whole, the whole thought process. God wants the kind of conviction that changes your attitude and your outlook on life. This is not an unreasonable demand. It's a measure of the grace of God. So, belief in the resurrection is not a casual thing. It's literally a matter of life and death. In the gospel, we read these words from our Lord Jesus Christ to St. Thomas, who doubted the resurrection until he had seen physical proof. Lord, he said, sorry, our Lord said, put your finger here, see my hands, put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not be faithless, but believing. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. St. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. We cannot ignore the power of this story because it demonstrates that what the disciples saw was not some sort of ghost or vision. It was real flesh and blood. And this flesh and blood still had the wounds that he had received a few days earlier. Still had the holes in his hands. This, this huge spear wound in his side. And so his presence shook St. Thomas. He cries out, my Lord and my God. It is one of the direct instances where Christ clearly called God. And we notice that our Lord does not rebuke him or silence him. My Lord and my God. He is referred to as God. And Christ does not rebuke him and say, no, 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 none of that. Don't call me God. He doesn't say that. He doesn't say to St. Thomas, don't say this, it's blasphemy. Our Lord accepts these words from St. Thomas because they're full of truth. And I want to reiterate, our Lord says, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen, yet they believe. 
the sight and the presence of our Lord, it, it shook the disciples. And it completely changed their worldviews. And it changed the fabric of society around them. Those men who were hiding became bold and courageous like lions. They went from place to place, preaching the crucifixion and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Nearly every single one of them was murdered for preaching. Every single one of them, all, mostly all of them, were murdered for teaching and proclaiming that Christ was risen from the dead. At no time did the disciples change their, their story. They did not waver at all. At no time did the disciples say, you know what? You got me. It was a story that we all made up. Never happened. They were thrown out of their synagogues. They were forcefully removed from the temple. They were ostracized. They were laughed at. They were mocked. They were beaten and imprisoned. And through all of this, the message never changed. Their joy never changed. Their joy never changed, never failed, because Christ had forever changed their understanding of things that mattered. He changed their understanding of suffering. He changed their understanding of death. He changed their understanding of God. He changed their understanding of the truth because he demonstrates that he is truth. Ultimately, he changed their very understanding of life. They were ready to leave everything behind in order to boldly proclaim this objective truth. God exists. That God loves us so much that he sent his son into the world for us. And that his son suffered and died for us. And that this same son rose from the dead in order to give us renewed life and purpose through communion with him and fellowship with him. Objective truth in the person of our Lord Jesus Christ is meant to liberate and free the oppressed, this enslaved humanity, this from, from the delusion of idols, from the prison of false teachings that can never offer us healing, can never offer us hope, because they can never actually bring us the one true God. Why am I saying all this today? Because we are people of the resurrection. I don't want you to be enslaved and entangled with this world in its materialism, in its lusts. We are reminded that life has no meaning unless it's married to the truth. The resurrection of the crucified Lord, who is the only Son of God, should be the central truth of life. It should shake us to the core as it did to the disciples. It must change our lives. So to conclude, the story of St. Thomas is written for us as a reminder that these events, as unbelievable as they are, actually happened. We see from St. Thomas that Doubting is natural, even for someone who has followed Christ closely for many years. Someone who saw his miracles firsthand. And Christ is alive and loves each and every one of us. We're reminded that the apostles, they were frightened and huddled together, not knowing their futures, not knowing their fate. And we're reminded that after the Lord appeared to them, they were bold. And they went everywhere, preaching everywhere, regardless of the risk. And within two months of the resurrection, the followers of Christ multiplied from a mere few to thousands. All of this reminds us that the resurrection is real and powerful and changed the course of history. And this joy and this hope, this power is given to us freely, not because we earned it, but because he loves us. If our lives are difficult and full of pain and sorrow, be of good cheer. 
God has overcome pain. He has overcome sorrow by patiently enduring those things. If there are days when you wonder why you're alive and what the meaning of life is and all these kind of things, don't forget that our Lord Jesus Christ has conquered death. He gives us a chance to live for, for someone who lasts beyond the grave. It doesn't really matter where we start, even if we're skeptics like St. Thomas. But let us also imitate St. Thomas when he boldly came to the faith and said, My Lord and my God. That faith changed his life. And 2,000 years later, it still has the power to change ours. When we take the resurrection to heart, we can begin living. We can break free from fear and despair and hopelessness. We can break free from sickness and death. We can break free from the bonds of addiction and sin. We can break free from fear of others' opinions of us. Our Lord's victory over death becomes our victory over life. So we fill our hearts with the joy of Christ's resurrection, with the thought that while everything in this life is passing away, our life with God is still just beginning, and it will continue forever through Christ's glorious resurrection from the dead. This is the truth proclaimed by the apostles, and it is the truth and the reality of the people of God Christ is risen, truly he is risen, and glory be to God forever. Amen. Then he